What's up, everybody? On the back hash, where we talk all things Patrick G. Arts. I'm Cedric, and joined with me today is uh, Will and Chris, and then our special guest today, Mr. Caleb Fudge. How you doing today, Caleb? Good, how are you? I'm doing well, I'm doing well. Um, so we're kind of, like I said, we've been trying to find some folks that uh, have some DCI experience, been marching DCI just to get kind of a personal, their personal journey and experience in the DCI, and we have somebody who just recently finished marching a season. Um, pretty fresh. successful. Yeah, fresh. <laughs> Brand new. Still smell like Cheetos. Like, like still I smell know. like. Right. I'm, a, I'm a little. <laughs> <laughs> camp, but, you know. <laughs> but yeah, so. Your team is gone, so. Yeah. With, so. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Normally that kind of leaves our interview uh, stuff, but um, he's on his way back from a trip currently. So hot Chris Atlanta. is gonna, hot Atlanta, yeah. So Chris is going to take over duties. Players play. <laughs> Chris is going to take Sorry, over duties for that today. <laughs> <It was laughs> and, um, and yeah, he did. He was he was there. <laughs> and um, he's going to kind of leave the interview, and we're going to kind of do what kind of happens. So Chris, man, go ahead and do what you do, man. Yeah, man, awesome. So uh, Caleb, just starting out, just tell us a little bit about you know yourself and you know where you marched and and kind of your kind of background. Uh, with marching band and stuff like that. Yeah, so um, I'm a senior music education major from Western Kentucky University. Um, so I have plans right now to be student teaching in the fall. Don't know where yet, but sometime after that I plan on teaching somewhere. Uh, but before that, I graduated from Glasgow High School um, in 2019. Um, you know, we have a, had a pretty good band program made state finals twice so you know and uh, so after that came to western and uh this past summer i marched with the blue stars drum and bugle corps um got sevens and had a great experience so can't um can't ask for anything else that's what's up awesome i know and guys that you know they're on the podcast and people that watch it blue stars that was my jam this past year, so <laughs> I, I enjoyed it, and True thing. I was I, I was pulling for it for a, lo- a long time. So it's kind of cool to know, you know, we got someone in our backyard that uh, marched with them. Um, so uh, what did you march in Blue Stars? So what was your what's your instrument that you marched with, oh, yeah. with the Blue Stars? Um, I originally auditioned on trumpet and uh, got a call back, and then I was on mellophone for a camp. And about May ish, well, more more around April, uh, the brass captain had there uh, sent me a message and uh, asked me if I wanted to switch to trumpet, and I was like, yes, please. So um, <laughs> then I had my May camp and finished out on trumpet all the way to finals. So it's awesome, man. Yeah. So is this was this your first year marching with with Blue Stars? Yeah, it is. Uh, was so. I, I have one more year of eligibility, but I don't, I don't think that I'm gonna partake that one more year. So I'm just like a one man, one man type of dude that marched drum course. You know? hey, we, we had we had someone on here that marched cabbies did for one year. So one time, still DCI. We got Will Will March one year. So like, well, I see, I was a rook out though. So I, I yeah, I'll say you, you were rookie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah well, that was it. Yeah. I'm we more than 35 he, when he started marching. He's a lot. <laughs> You're still older than me. Fudge's birth certificate. No, I'm not. I don't, care what, I don't care what the rotation of the earth says. Oh, okay. You're still <laughs> older than me. <laughs> now, I'm an indoor head, so I've done far too many years in indoor. But the one year I did do it, I actually should have marched three years of drum corps. One would have been with Pioneer. Uh, and I could have done two at Scouts. But the Pioneer, when I would have marched Pioneer, would have been, this is 
since I done raged about my age, this is definitely going to show my, uh, the year I would have marched Pioneer would have probably, if it wasn't been 99, it would have been 2000. Yeah, we're old. I'm just going to sit my warm. too old, man. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, oh, well, um, anyway. All right, so, Kayla, another question. So, um, what made you want to march Blue Stars? What's something that, you know, intrigued you and made you want to join this core? Yeah, so, um, no, Blue Stars is a great organization. Um, and um, I saw them at a... Um, in 2019 at Murfreesboro, I've been going to that show for my whole life, since, well, since eighth grade, a marching experience. And um, they were early on, they weren't a top eight course, so they never came to Murfreesboro. Uh, but in 2019, they did, and they had the show that was called The Wild. And um, I was sitting beside my friend who uh, March got a contract in 2020. And... Um, we were just blown away by this by this show. You know, the drill was just very demanding, um, and just like took me by surprise. And I absolutely loved that show. And so, um, my friend that went to Glasgow with me, he uh, auditioned the year after, and uh, got a contract in 2020. And then that season didn't happen, so he marched in 21, and. Um, <clears throat> Then after that summer, I was like, I went, that was my first time going to Indianapolis and I watched the celebration that happened in 21 and, um, I was just blown away and I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this. So, um, I auditioned in at the Indianapolis camp and, uh, you know, once I got to the camp, uh, immediately I felt like a part of the family, you know, everybody, uh, was very just enthusiastic there, you know, ready to kick back the regular season of the drum corps. And um, <clears throat> admin was very helpful and just very, uh, I don't know, it was just a great experience from the audition camp. And I, I knew if I was going to make it, I was at the right place. Awesome, man. That's good to hear. Good to hear some good vibes from an organization and yeah. all that kind of stuff. I know we were at the we were at the celebration <clears throat> as well uh, last year, and I mean it was it wasn't like a normal season, but man that that show was awesome. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I know I had a lot of good times, especially the scout show. Man, that scout show was oh yeah, that was a good show. <laughs> it was awesome. So, um, so get a little bit into like the. Um, cause the ones well, people, people we've had on, um, one of the previous ones, Ethan, one of our interviewers, he actually marched blue stars. Uh, was his last year? Was that 2016? I think is what it was. Um, there, so we, we've gotten some of that in, I think that's what he said. Um, what was, what was the auditioning experience like, um, as far as like, you know, we've got some people that might that listen that might want to audition. You know, what, what was that kind of like for you uh, going into that? Yeah, so uh, I auditioned. It was a really hectic week. Uh, we had our symphonic band concert uh, Friday night of that week. Then I had a football game a Saturday, and then I went up to Louisville. And then that morning, I went to Indy on Sunday morning to audition. Phew. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know how I survived it, but I, uh, you know, in the car driving, I was like very nervous. Um, my friend told me to look for for a guy, and um, like let him know who I was. So I had I had one guy that I knew knew of. Um, so driving up, I'm like my face for one feels terrible because it's was a November football game. Um, you know, face felt awful. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do? So I just remember like getting my mouthpiece and doing like some buzzing and just hoping that I was going to be able to play. So um, I pulled up there and it was at this fairground and in the fairground, there was some, there was a rodeo going on and they had like pigs (laughs) and stuff everywhere. It was just like, it was nonsense. (laughs) So um, just went in there and I um, remember just being blown away from, like, how uh, 
for, they were particular about everything, you know, from the moment of just like grabbing your horn and like what you're supposed to do and like, you know, bringing, bringing a towel and like where to set your horn, how to set it down. Um, and the brass captain head wasn't at that camp, but a couple of the, um, like texts around the rehearsal. But even then, I mean, they, it was like they were the brass catching head. They just took the role and they were very like communi they communicated very well on what they wanted. And so, um, <clears throat> we started like in visual, um, and did some visual things and they're <clears throat> with the schedule too. It's very, very methodical and thought out on how they, how they do everything just in an audition camp, like one day. And, so I can remember going in to my audition and they could tell I was nervous. They were like, Hey, just like, give it your best. And, uh, you know, so I, I gave it my best. And, uh, <clears throat> before it was like an 8 AM to 5 PM camp. So at the end they got us all around and they told us who got a contract, who, uh, consider your options, which is like, we're not cutting you and telling you not to come back. That just means like you're not at the level today that we think that you could be, but consider your options and here are a couple ideas. And I didn't get that, but I got a call back. So, nice. uh, but even after that, they were still very P and K and they're like, if you have any questions, let us know. And so, um, <clears throat> then I went to the callback and, uh, had a great experience there. And, uh, it was actually virtual because of, some COVID things. I can't really remember. It was in March, but it was online. And then I got to talk to the brass catching head and they gave me a spot on the telephone. So, hmm. um, but yeah, that's kind of how my audition process went. And, uh, one thing to take away is just the, the communication and just the, like the careness that the whole organization had for every single member. So, hmm. That's awesome, man. Yeah, we tell a lot of. That's like say. I was just saying, uh, we tell a lot of people, man. Even if you never, if you don't make a group, just going, you're going to get. Just going to an audition, you're going to get a lot of instruction, a whole lot of stuff. So it's going to be just as beneficial as if you were to make it. So. Yeah, it's just interesting just to see, you know, how you know, pandemic impacted kind of how your audition process kind of went with, you know, you had an in-person one next to livestock yeah. and then, you, <laughs> and then you go to, you know, a virtual one, um, there. Um, that's really interesting. I, I think that's kind of cool. Now did, did all your auditions, did you only have the audition in Indianapolis? Did you have to go anywhere else after that? Uh, virtual one no. Or like, no, they're all they're Blue Stars are based out across Wisconsin, but uh, yeah. they 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 had some we had some satellite camps in Arizona, Texas. Uh, there's one in West Virginia this year. I can't remember about last year, but the brass and percussion, the May camp, and everything was going to be in Indianapolis at that fairground. So. Um, but to the virtual camp, it was, it was a hectic weekend too, because it was about two weeks before and I had to figure out a place where I was going to do my camp. And, uh, so I had to go to my church building and like clear out all the chairs and their like multi-purpose room and, um, uh, <laughs> do the camp there. But then I also had to submit my audition before. So I was everywhere trying to find places where I could visually do my audition. And, um, uh, it was just like, Hey, get it done, you know, give it your all. Like, don't, <clears throat> if there's anybody on here that's thinking about marching is definitely like take time in your audition. If it's going to be online, um, because videos are a great like audition resource, but you can't really talk to the, the people. So they're not going to know you. So they want to see like your work ethic. And so uh, that's one of the things that I tried to do is just like get as many takes in because the first one isn't going to be your best one. You know, the, <laughs> the last one is going to be your best one. So, but I submitted that and then I had the, then we had the camp. And so, so that, 
that's interesting. So the the virtual camp. Was it like? Did they just have? Did you just have, to have a camera set up? And like, did you guys have like a Zoom? And like, like you guys, like, how did that? That's interesting to me because, like, you know, being a, a core, I mean, it's it's yeah. you know, it's individualized, but it's also you know, very team oriented. So kind of how that process kind of works. That that intrigues me. Yeah. With that. Um. So that was just going to be a brass camp. Uh. Because the color guard and percussion are in the WGI, WGI world, in that time around March. So uh, we really didn't have a percussion section until like May, I think, is like whenever our, the full core actually had a camp. So it was just brass. And um, so we just met over Zoom. They sent a schedule. And we had like different breakout rooms for uh, visual and uh, brass, we had like subsectionals in different breakout rooms, and um, you know they on the Zoom call. It, it basically was just like a regular camp. You know they treated it like it was, and the protocols were still in the same. And they did a couple of Zoom. The horn sergeant and uh, the drum major kind of um, did Zoom meetings before the camp to go over how it was going to be and that, you know, even though we're not in person, we still want to get a lot done. So whenever we come in May, it's like ready to hit the ground running and get ready for four city where spring training was. So that, that's kind of how that mindset was and worked out very well and uh, set us up great for spring training. So. That's yeah. cool, man. That's, yeah, that's just yeah. interesting to, to think of like that. Like, yeah. I mean, a lot of people don't think, you know, you know, this season happened, which was awesome, but I mean, COVID was still a big part of, you know, that things were going on and having to switch to a virtual camp and how do you do that as a core? And it sounds like they, they're on top of it. So that's really cool to, yeah. to yeah. hear that, about. Having that uh, first, I was at the first weekend of camps. They said, this is the first camp that we've had since November of 2018 or like, you know, that, that season so it's like three years of like gap between uh camps so it was like very it was stressful because you know you want to do the best but it's also like hey like let's listen to what the admin and everybody else is saying and just like trust in the process and uh you know so that's awesome yeah i so, have some real quick I'll go ahead, Sid. Go ahead. I was going to say, I, you said breakout rooms and Zoom meetings. I had a little PTSD. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. You know, because, I mean, in the band world, you know, that the, the COVID year that we have to teach when kids were either all the way home, virtual, or we were doing a hybrid mm -hmm. system. Like, we had, you know, teaching Insane. band. You know, we still have to teach band and trying to figure out the way to let kids play virtually and I mean, it was it was really weird, and you know, of course, by the time we figured it out, they're like, "All right, you can go back to school normal now." I was like, yeah, I know how to do this now. I'll never forget, <laughs> never get sitting there, and they wanted us to put a Christmas concert uh, mm -hmm. together. I'll never forget uh, Nathaniel, who was on our uh, show in the past. He, he had to sit there and got all these videos from all these kids, and then had to sync it all together. Yeah and make this huge like montage video of them playing Ode to Joy or something like that. Like mm -hmm. COVID was wild, man, as an educator. So, mm -hmm. man, like, man, it was like the wild west out there. It was, was, wild it was, it was crazy. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't doubt it. I don't doubt that 100% because yeah. it was wild for us. Like, I couldn't imagine having like, you know, 10 yeah. teachers telling you, you know, yeah. this is what you need to do. So we were blessed at but, Western to still be able to play because we, had MRH, the music building there, and it's like so large where you can have ensembles where we were six feet apart, and you know, you can't hear a single thing on what's going on across the ensemble. So you're just playing and like trying and you know, watching and you know, doing this. Like, doing <laughs> yeah. that was that was it's definitely like the biggest challenge teaching, teaching band was them being six feet apart. And you go, of course, with young kids, if they, that security of having people around you and you can hear them and every day it's like just play out just trust yeah. me 
it's come, it, it's it's working, but don't back off. And yeah, it was, it was like it was like marching band inside. Mm-hmm. Was, you know, what I mean, like, I just like, so far apart, space out. And it took them a minute, but once they did it, we were fine. You know, so uh, very interesting. Yeah. Very so, interesting. Caleb, real quick. So, what was your first um, DCI experience? I could just be like as a fan, or like you know, what what got you interested mm-hmm. in the activity? Yeah, so as I touched on earlier, um, I've been going to the DCI Murfreesboro show since my eighth grade year. And, um, you know, going to that eighth grade year in 2014, you know, I saw Fellini ask, uh, Tilt, let's see, I saw Crown, All of This World, and, uh, you know, then that, that's just a great show, you know, after band camp. Uh, like in 15, I got to see the cadets, you know, that horn line that year is just like amazing. And, uh, our brass captain head was actually, uh, he worked at the cadets as a tech and he worked there from like 14 to 17, I think that he went to crusaders. Uh, so, you know, he was under Gino there and, uh, just like the overall shows, that I got to saw at Murfreesboro was just like mind boggling of like, wow. Like that's like the world champions, like right there, like I'm watching. And so, uh, like into this year, you know, being there and actually performing in that show is just like, you know, I had my whole band there, my family and, uh, you know, that's just a surreal experience to being at a show, being a fan, and then walking out on that field and looking up like, hey, I sat there in like eighth grade and there's somebody there watching me out here now and just like that experience. And it doesn't, you know, whenever you're there, you're like, wow, but it doesn't hit you till after the after the show or like after the season where you're like, I just did that. So, <laughs> but yeah, that, that was a, great show and just like very very cool to like see from where i was in eighth grade and like going to that show and then performing um so so is that one of your your experience. top moments of the season last year was was that show or do you have another like moment that really sticks out of your head um well just being the show in general uh, but my show was like so bad that show <laughs> Cause I had so much going through my head. Um, man, I, I saved that show because I, I want to remember that moment. It's on a Google drive and I'm going to, you know, keep it. And, uh, just watching that show and just like, you know, I had a couple mistakes and my friend who marched tuba, he was, had our bots rotations in like part three where they're, they're just running, you know? And he's like, yeah, man, like, he was right in front of our band and just like running, you know, he just had like the hardest drill and just like, you know, out there, like we look like superstars just being out there uh, (laughs) running around, you know, but he was telling me the same thing. Like he had so many mistakes. Um, But let's see another great show. I mean, finals, of course, you know, great show. Um, I guess, Detroit was a really cool drum corps experience for me. Uh, you know, going back and watching a video and just being like, man, that was rough. But like, aside from like the score standpoint, you know, just that's the first show uh, since finals of 2019 that you got scores from. And, you know, being a part of that was cool being, you know, being in Ford Field, uh, and I got to see my parents, they came. So that was, that was really cool. And just like seeing, finally performing for like fans and, you know, them standing up and cheering, you know, it didn't have the best show, but like, it's still drum corps and, you know, you still gave it your all no matter what happened. So no, and that, that was just a cool experience. So. Listen, y'all probably could have came out there and played Mary Had a Little Lamb in the crowd. I would have went nuts because oh, yeah. they, oh, yeah. they, they were just happy to have drum corps back. So. Oh, yes, they were. Yes. For real. Like, we were in theaters I watching I think they were going to make it. 
Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, I was just saying we were in the theaters watching it, and when um, I think it was um, Steve Rodinero was just like in drum corps back, and the, the, the theater was like, yes, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, like you said, to, to be a part crazy. of it, basically a historical moment to bring that back, I'm sure. <clears throat> sure that was cool. I mean, it had a. So it had to happen. You got you got the 50th anniversary. Like it was like the, per, the perfect culmination, man. Like bring it back after the hiatus. And, I mean, and then you have one of the most successful seasons I think we've had in a long time. And like tension you know, seasons yeah. at that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just now remembered. Um, it's kind of all like you know. I'm thinking more about it, and you have like so many memories that just like overwhelm yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can remember. Uh, well, for one, the regional at Atlanta wasn't in. Um, it wasn't in the Mercedes Benz Stadium. It was actually at Turner yeah. Field, yeah. and that was just a weird stadium. Like it was still a baseball stadium, and our press box was on like the 48 yard line. And it was just oh, like, you know, it was a weird stadium, but like cool. Um, and then being in San Antonio, of course, was very cool. But actually, like being at Allentown, hearing all the history that goes on at Allentown, and like I had no idea that stadium was as massive as what it is. Like that stadium is absolutely massive. And in the know, middle of nowhere. Feels like something. Yeah. Like that yeah. <laughs> and they were telling me, like, you know, you're going to feel like you're all alone out there. And I'm like, okay, like, so? And like, I went out there and I was like, man, I feel alone. You know, and they're, <laughs> after after the show, they were like, that That was like one of the best. You no, know, this is where drum corps are made at Allentown. Like, if you have a good run here, then, like, you know, it's going to be noticed. And, like, next year is going to be like a really good year. Um, and the Viz team came and talked to us and they were like, man, I was standing up there next to like the old farts up there who marched back in the seventies and they were clapping for you. So you know, <laughs> like, that, that was a, I will say, man, like I, I, I mean that the, you're all show this year. I just, I'm a I'm a social studies teacher, so I'm a big history person. And so, one of my big things, though, when it comes to marching band or, or bands in general, I don't like history shows because they they get so campy and, and cheesy. But like the way that your all's core did it was so I don't know. I just loved it. I thought it was such a good idea. The oh, the I'm sorry, my scheme's coming in. <laughs> oh, you're all good. Yeah, yeah. hang on. Good. So. Fellas. Yeah. Hmm. Intermission. 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 <laughs> All right, here we go. Awesome. <laughs> You're all good. Well, I was just saying, like... Sorry. Um, jam, you know, just... Chut, chicka, chut, chut, chicka, chut, That commercial, man. I, let me just say, that commercial... I mean, we were at finals. I think like seven years in a row, they played that literally like they still thirty play. times. They, yeah, they still play. They still play. And, after every yeah. core, chut chicka chut chut chicka chut chut. <laughs> I don't know, man. That 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 commercial gets stuck in my head forever. Diga. But Diga. anyway, no, uh, <laughs> uh, but anyway, the. The what I was saying about the just the blue stars, it's the way the show was done. Like it was it was historical but in a way that was um it wasn't campy. You know what I mean? It wasn't cheesy or anything like that. And the yeah. the I love the design of the uniforms and kind of what they're doing with, you know, a lot of stuff going on there. So um I guess kinda of talk about like the, the, the process of um the idea that the visuals the well the, anyone the staff kinda of had going into your, what they kind of tell you about like what they wanted the show to be. If you, if you remember that. Yeah, I, I remember that. Um, so <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not really going to go into detail about like why, cause they told us like not to tell and I'll, you know, don't, don't, uh, don't, don't break any yeah. secrets. I don't want yeah, you in trouble. Yeah. Or anything, yeah. So. <laughs> uh, you guys watching like, you, you know, not <clears throat> anyway. So they, they told us like why, 
at the May camp, uh, Michael Shapiro, the man himself, you know, was there at the camp. And just a little side note, like, I have no idea who this man is. And they're like, listen, Michael Shapiro is like the beast. Like, if he tells you to do something, like, you do it, like, no matter what. And if he's talking, you stand there at standby and, like, you, you know, you don't mess with the dude. And I'm like, okay, like, I'm going to take y'all, you know. But anyways, so um, being being at the May camp, he told us about the show and, like, why, why it took so long to develop. And they had to do some changing with the show. But it's still the same show that they had in mind. Just a little different, like, concept. Um, so... But we had the music at the camps. Like, we were playing through the music, and we just didn't know what the show was about. So you, you can imagine just, like, playing this piece of music and having no idea, like, how to perform it was, like, very difficult. And you're just, like, playing it to make it clean. But then we figured out what the show was about, and they told us about, like, the uniforms, but they weren't finalized yet. And so, going into spring training, we knew the show uh, was going to be called Of War and Peace, but and it was based off the book of uh, Leo Tol- Tolstoy. Um, <clears throat> so, that's all we knew. We had no idea of the source music yet. We actually didn't really know the source music until they released it, because they just never told us, until they released it, like, three days before Detroit actually where it was from um so you know we're just out there playing the show we got our our drill you know and did all that but we actually really didn't see the uniforms until about a week before detroit we actually left for a city before we even saw the uniform wow um or no never mind we didn't try on. We didn't try on the uniforms until we got. We stopped at Lacrosse before we went to Detroit, and so they had the uniforms ordered there. But we saw a picture of the uniforms and like the show, like the graphic and everything like that. But um, so that's kind of like the more like design side of the show. Uh, the visual side of the show, like the marching and like all that uh you know you're just learning your show in spring training and um you know you're listening to what they tell you and everything uh but it really wasn't until like tour where i feel like we actually took ownership in the show um and just like trying to like convey this like idea of like war and like while there's war there's still like peace happening kind of is what I kind of conveyed um, and I can remember whenever we were in Texas tour and uh, we had a char- guy that is on the Viz team that works on like character development and that was just a fun rehearsal like you know you're going out of your comfort zone and just like you know like just trying to like be this like character for yourself and so I made this character and stuff, and that was really cool. And, uh, you know, that's whenever the show started, like, going up. It's, like, whenever you, like, actually became a part of the show, like, finding a character. And so, you know, it was just a uphill um, improvement right from the beginning. Like, we, our scores never dropped. So, uh, you know... <clears throat> something to be positive about is like we always got better and that's that's just kind of how the show was and blue stars are you know the show you see at detroit is not the final show whatsoever and um you know that's that's the motto that they live by and by all means we did it this past year so awesome man i'll say that's really cool to hear about the the character development kind of things because you know i feel like 
you know, 20 years ago, we're not getting that kind of care development of, of making stuff. And I think that really makes the buy-in a lot better when you're able to develop something like that. So that's really interesting to kind of hear you guys having a rehearsal where you kind of develop who you are on the field, Yeah, um, which is pretty cool, I think. We were so. in the band hall. You know, they call, call it band halls down there. And the reason they call it band halls is because, like, they're giant foremost. They're, like, all the band rooms down there. I call them band rooms, but it, it was raining one day, and I, I can just re- – I vividly remember that rehearsal of how just this guy was. He actually is on staff at Disney. He's, like, a performer there, and he comes in, like, a week or so and, like, does stuff with us. So, very cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Well – Fellas, you got any questions for for Caleb? You want to ask or? So she hit him on the nail for me. <laughs> this one, I guess another. <laughs> we're just for a quick one. So mm-hmm. I know you said, you know, you're going to be one and done with it. What what's post college, post secondary plan for you? Uh yeah, so I don't really have a lot of plans for that summer in regards to like teaching and stuff like that. Uh, I assume. Uh, I know I'll be helping Glasgow quite a bit, uh, but I assume that where I will be student teaching next fall is where I'm going to be kind of based, like seen at, like helping there at their band camp and wherever that is. So after that, hoping to have a job, uh, preferably high school, but middle school is okay too. You know, just wherever they'll hire me is where I plan on going and uh, just still helping out the marching band wherever I go. You know, that's what I plan to do as of now. You know, that might change by in a month, but, you know, (laughs) where I'm at now. Yeah. Yeah. I'll say side note, you're being very smart with student teaching in the fall, being a music educator. Mm -hmm. Like that's going to give you so much more idea of what it's actually going to be like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like a lot of people that do in the spring, they're just like, oh, it's fun. And then all of a sudden you got marching band you have to deal with and like, oh, crap, I forgot this actually exists. <laughs> you yeah. know, like yeah. a lot more I was, to it. I was blessed enough to student teach in the fall and that prepared me so much for everything that goes involved because you're starting sixth graders, you're starting your beginners in the fall, you're learning how to start running a marching band program in the fall. You know, you get to program a Christmas concert, or if they have a like, you get it all in those in that fall semester. So, most yeah. definitely, yeah. I might need to make sure I have my um, student teacher stuff in. Maybe you can come out to East, work with me. <laughs> <laughs> so, I got one more quick question because it's always fun to talk about. What is your your favorite DCI show of all time? Like, what's the one that you like? If you had to say. Someone's like, listen, I'm trying to get this person to the activity. What's the one show that you would show to that person? You know, you go to, like, any of the, like, top five. I mean, nowadays, like, it's like you watch any of the top five or, like, you know, top six with that. Like, you're going to get a product that's just, like, unreal. And, um, man, I... There's so many great shows, you know. Um, <clears throat> it's it's tough, man. Know, it's in, tough. in regards, in regards to like horn lines, you know, the show design in Cadets and Fifteen was like not good, but that horn line, like I said, man, they were just like fire. Uh, I love that brass book, <clears throat> uh, and also like Crown. 2012 and 13, just the cleanliness of that brass book. Um, <clears throat> but I mean, in all like favorite, <clears throat> just like recent years, I like uh, Blue Coats, like Tilt is a really good show. Uh, <clears throat> but like older shows, <clears throat> I'm not really like. I guess I don't know, like, what's the definition of, like, an older show, like, before... <laughs> Dude, hey, old is old. I, old, old. Old is relative, so you're not going to hurt our feelings if no. you're just like... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> whatever you think, whatever you want to do is, I mean, 
we're not going to go back to starving the end or anything like that. No. <laughs> That's no. what it is. It's what it is. But you know. the kilties. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, uh, see, <clears throat> the Phantom of the Opera show by uh, Vanguard, that was just a really cool show. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, I guess I don't really have, like, I have, like, shows that I go to, but... It's hard to pick a favorite, man. Like, I get that. I mean, it is hard. So, That's why I love answer, asking that question because it's like, I mean, I know I've got like a, a library full of ones. I'm like, oh, I really like this one. I like this one. You know, it yeah. just doesn't, you know, it's always fun to, yeah. to hear about. But, so. I mean, I like all the like old, like Crown, like 2000. I like their 2008 show, uh, Finnis or mm. yeah, that, that show. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a good yeah. one. Yeah, good one. So, um, man, I'm just like, if it sounds good, if it looks good, man, I'm, I'll I'll show somebody. Nice. <clears throat> yeah. I'll say like, I, I think we're, I think I, I, I think I am satisfied with the answers. So I think we. <laughs> <laughs> And it would if you were. Like, oh. like, no. It's, like, <laughs> no. It's over. Like, I, we can't take them back. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Well, Caleb, we really yeah, appreciate man. your time and coming on and sharing your experience. Uh, yeah. With all of us and everybody <laughs> that's watching. Um, if you guys like the interview, and uh, let us know in the comments what you think. What If you have a favorite drum course, what is it? What was it of all time? Um, and things of that nature. You can find us on all social media aspects, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. You can also listen to this podcast on anchor.fm and spotify.fm. Um, yep. So make sure you hit the follow button, the like button, the subscribe button. So we don't have a donate button yet, but you know, if you want to make one, that's cool too. Um, we got to get a thousand subscribers to get a donate button. All right, so in about five years, um, let's do it. No, we're going to do it. We need to start the train. Start the train. That's what needs to happen. Um, I'll but yeah. Out for my, for my Blue Stars friends. There you go. There it is. There you go. go. And then uh, hit the notification button. That way you'll know when we come out with podcasts. So, fellas, if you don't have anything else. Um, I just want to say, Caleb, thank you, man. It's yeah, awesome to get you. someone in here. You know, for Got real. some good insights, man. Enjoyed it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. Just, so for we, uh, that's that's the only thing you know. If you're on here watching, is don't be afraid to audition. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just like go for it. You know, no no matter where you audition, you're gonna you're gonna get a good experience. Hopefully, hopefully. Uh, you know, drum corps has changed so much since 2019. You know, mm -hmm. so um, it, you know, it's just great great uh, organization that drum corps is and teaches you a lot and just go for it don't be afraid there it is yeah, and yeah, it's been a pretty common thread with all of our interviewer interviewees is go do it go after it it's a great experience whether you just like get to audition or whether you actually get to make it in so wise words from a young man he is so <laughs> <laughs> So for William, for Chris, and for Caleb, my name is Cedric, and for Zach, who's out there, um, hopefully being safe travels. This has been episode 18 Atlanta. of On the Back Hash. Where the players play. Yeah. <laughs> On the 50 year line, where the oh, Falcons yeah. like to play. Okay, sorry. We had such a good thing. Anyway, uh, for all of us, <laughs> go out and make sure you watch the a marching band show this weekend. Support all your local groups. It's getting nitty gritty. We're getting into the heck, the good part of the season. You got regionals and you got last contest seasons and championships and all types of stuff happening. So, go support your local arts on a football field Saturday. So, yep. For all of us, to all of you, you guys take care, and we are dut dut out out. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Look at that. <laughs>